Hey guys, Caleb here with DSLR Video Shooter, and for the first time in a long time, we're talking about Canon here on the channel, which I'm very excited about. I love Canon. Uh, they haven't been the awesomest, the best option in recent years, in my opinion, but there's been some obvious news that has kind of changed that, that being the R5 and a few other cameras coming up this and next year. Now, I actually don't like doing these type of videos where I don't have the camera, we're just talking about things, but I did have something that's been on my mind for a while when it comes to Canon in particular and their entire lineup. And I've noticed there's kind of a big gap. There's a huge hole in their lineup. And I wanna talk about that today and talk about why the R5 really isn't going to be a good option for many people. So to set the stage, let's look at Canon's current lineup when it comes to their mirrorless cameras, their cinema cameras. And this list I'm about to show you uh, is more kind of the intermediate to pro level. So I'm not gonna be showing you every single camera that shoots video that Canon sells. The idea here is more kind of video centric mirrorless cameras and cinema cameras that have high resolution, larger sensors, things like Canon C-Log and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. And we're starting at around 1500, two grand and going all the way up. So I'm gonna pull the laptop into frame here and we're going to jump in and take a look at the line. So here's the landscape right now from Canon. On the very high end, we have the C700, which starts at 3,300 bucks and then a bunch of cinema cameras, the 1DX Mark III, and it works its way down to the XC10, which is still for sale. Just above the XC10, we've got the EOS R, of course, as well as the XC15, the 5D Mark IV, C100 Mark II, C200, 1DX3, C300 Mark II, C300 Mark III, C500 Mark II, and back to the C700. So this is the current landscape from Canon. Now, you might be looking at this list and just like me, see a couple cameras that really aren't good options right now, even though they might be the current model and they're still for sale. So let's go ahead and cut some of these cameras out and see what's actually a good buy in today's world if you're buying Canon. So first and foremost, we're gonna cut out both the XC10 and XC15. While these cameras have 4K options and some really cool features actually for video, they have a really small sensor. I believe it's around one inch, which is kind of a no-go. So we're gonna cut those out. I'm also gonna cut out the 5D Mark IV, while it is a great camera, the EOS R really is, in my opinion, a better buy if your focus is going to be video. Then we have the C100 Mark II, which is quite long in the tooth. When it was released, it was $5,500. That's that first line of numbers below the cameras. But now it's available for $2,700. But the problem with this camera is that it's quite long in the tooth and it only shoots 1080p, which is a real bummer. So we're gonna cut that out of the list. Then we have the C200, which is a phenomenal camera. Lots of people are loving that right now. And we have the new 1DX Mark III, which also has some pretty ridiculous specs when it comes to video. Then we have the C300 Mark II, which has just been replaced by the Mark III. So while it still is a pretty decent buy at less than half the original price, so you can get it now for 7,500 bucks, which is crazy. It has been replaced by the Mark III and the C200 is kind of nipping at its heels when it comes to specs. So that takes care of that camera. And finally, we have the C700 at the top, which I'm also gonna cut off the list. You're really not gonna be getting into that camera unless you have very specific big budget needs. Uh, and the C500 Mark II, which was released not that long ago, uh, also has an incredible spec, so it's probably a way better buy at half the cost new. So when you cut all those cameras out, this is what you're left with. The Canon EOS R, or EOS R, excuse me, Gerald, uh, the C200, the 1DX Mark III, the C300 Mark III, and finally the C500 Mark II. So if you're a serious video person looking to buy a Canon camera that has a large sensor and high resolution with other video-centric features, these are the cameras available to you right now, and there's only five of them. And when you look at the prices of these five cameras, you're going to notice something very quickly. There is a massive jump between the most affordable kind of option, the EOS R, and all these other cameras. Even though the C200 has gotten much more affordable, it's still four grand at the cheapest configuration. And if you really want a small form factor mirrorless, you're really stuck with the EOS R. So what's the solution to this? 
this problem with Canon's line? Well, we have a couple camera rumors and camera announcements that are going to fill that out. So let's talk about those now, starting with the most concrete, which is the Canon R5. Now, you guys probably already know by now that that camera looks like it's going to be ridiculous. I'll have some information on a card to a much better video that'll talk about the specifics of that camera. But in short, it shoots internal raw at 8K with in-body stabilization and records on CFAS cards. So it's loaded and it has a lot of features, which is very exciting and everyone got super stoked for this camera, but there's one thing that is going to make it super not cool and that is going to be the price. Now, trust me, I would love it if this camera was under four grand or 3,500 bucks. But when you look at those specs for the R5 and you compare them to cameras like the C500 Mark II, which is $16,000, I have a really hard time believing that that's the price this camera is going to have. I think this camera is going to be probably five, six or more thousand dollars if you're gonna to wanna to pick this thing up. So going back to that lineup, where does the R5 fit in? Well, I think it's going to land somewhere around the 1DX price. Maybe best case scenario, 3,500 or four grand, but it's probably going to be more like five, six or more thousand dollars. Again, I would love to be wrong here, but I really have a hard time seeing Canon do that. So even considering the R5, we're still looking at most of these cameras landing over four grand, probably over $5,000. So what else could potentially be a solution? Well, we also know that Canon's going to have something like the R6 come out and that should be more affordable. So what I'm really hoping with that camera is that we're going to see something uh, at least at the $3,500 mark. So something around the price of the 5D, maybe something around that $2,400, but probably something more expensive than that in my opinion. And hopefully this camera will compete with other manufacturers. So right now, Canon has nothing that stands up to the S1, which is what I'm filming this on, which shoots amazing 4K full frame footage. Same goes with the a7 III, which has full frame 4K. Canon still doesn't have full frame 4K, unless you go up to the C500 Mark II or the 1DX. So the R5 will hopefully be the camera for the masses. And all I'm really looking for with that thing is to be full frame and shoot 4K. If Canon can do that, honestly, I'm probably switching back, which I would be super excited to do. I love Canon, that's where I started. It's amazing, love them. But we're still looking at 3,500 plus dollars in my opinion for that camera, hopefully less than that, but that's probably a realistic number to be considering. So where are we gonna get some love on the low end of this spectrum? And there are a couple more cameras that are kind of far out there, but could be something we see. And that is an EOS R Mark II, which would be a very exciting camera. Again, if they just added full frame 4K, maybe an updated sensor, updated processor, I think that would do the trick. And again, if we can have full frame 4K to compete with current cameras, even if it's more expensive, that's okay with me. And for those who freak out with these prices and why Canon's so expensive, it's just kind of life. And I call it the red tax. Canon is such an established brand. They do make incredible cameras, but they are usually more expensive and on par or kind of behind when it comes to the mirrorless market, not necessarily the cinema market where Canon's clearly killing it. So an EOS R Mark II would be awesome, uh, but this R6 that we just talked about might kind of fill that gap. It just depends on where Canon puts the price tag on all of this. Another big question mark for me is the crop sensor market. So most of these cameras coming out from Canon are being announced as full frame. And to my knowledge, there are no crop sensor RF cameras available right now. There's full frame cameras that crop when in 4K, which there's plenty of those. But when it comes to an APS-C or Super 35 camera, there really isn't one available. So will we ever see something like a 7D, but in a mirrorless body with an RF mount? I don't know. Another question I have that's related is will Canon take their EOS M mount and camera line and make that their kind of crop sensor and keep RF full frame? 
all questions I have no answers to. And the last thing I wanna talk about when it comes to potential future cameras is the Canon XC line. Now, I've talked a lot with my friend Jem Schofield over at the C47, you can check out his channel, and uh, we talk about this camera, I don't know, every other month because it's really long in the tooth, but it's such an interesting form factor. It's kind of like a tiny baby C100 that can shoot 4K with a small sensor. What I would love to see is Canon taking that body and that form factor and giving us kind of an in-between camera. Think of it as kind of a C50, remember when that was rumored, uh, or a mini version of a C100 that can shoot 4K, has a larger sensor, uh, built-in ND, and that awesome little XLR adapter on top. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I think there could be something in that lineup, kind of in between cinema and mirrorless with video features. I would love to see that, that would just make my day. So as the lineup stands on the cinema end, the high end, you're good to go to buy a new camera right now. There are two incredible options, the C500 Mark II and the C300 Mark III, both wildly good cameras. The C200 is getting a little long in the tooth and unless you shoot raw, it's kind of got some problems that are painful to work with. The 1DX is pretty awesome, but the data rates are stupid high. It's a huge camera. It's still that traditional sports shooter DSLR, if you will. And then the EOS R is getting a little old. It's got that older processor, that soft 4K and it's cropped. So I'm really looking forward to what's happening in the future from Canon. Clearly they have started to change how they're thinking when it comes to prices on these cameras and features, even on the cinema end. So really it's a bad time if you're trying to buy a camera from Canon under $5,000, under $4,000. You definitely wanna wait and see what Canon does with the R5, the R6, and future cameras. And in closing, I'm just gonna say, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Canon does. They're in a really interesting position right now. I feel like they're pivoting as we speak. And I would love to go back to shooting on a Canon camera. I've been a Panasonic fan for a long time, but you know, I would love to go back to Team Red. So that's gonna wrap it up for me. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day and we will see you in the next video.